Hey everybody, Eric Brown, Mobile Media, Mobile Media. Hey, I want to talk about um, some pretty interesting facts that, uh, you know, in my family, uh, in particular my grandmother. My grandmother actually worked for two Fort Worth mayors, two former Fort Worth mayors, and she didn't work as a chief of staff, she didn't work as a secretary or on a committee. My grandmother worked uh, as a, you know, a general laborer, cleaning their homes, cleaning their toilets, feeding their kids, raising their kids. Yeah, for two Fort Worth mayors, that's what she did. And uh, I never forget, you know, oftentimes I would um, go out with a family member, whoever was taking her to work, you know, sometimes be my mom or aunt. I would always ride out there. And I tell you, man, I never could understand why. Why did everything start changing and looking different when I left my neighborhood? Everything started getting nice and pretty, the big houses, the big yards. And I'm like, why can't we have that, you know? It's just the craziest thing. Um, and as I got older, I started to think about my grandmother working for the two Fort Worth mayors. Uh, last name Barr and last name Overcash. Overcash. And so I always thought about, you know, seeing my grandmother leave home, heading to work at these, uh, for these mayors. And as I got older, I started to think about the things she must have had to endure, you know, back then. Because I'm going to tell you right now, it, it was, it was very... Just like it's racially charged now, hell, it was racially charged back then, even more so. You had to definitely keep your mouth shut back then. So, who knows what my granny went through. Not necessarily the same from the bars or the overcashes, but you got to remember these folks, uh, these type of folks entertain. They have folks in their homes, and I'm sure they had plenty of racists in their homes. And who knows how they treated my grandmother. But for that reason, I've made a commitment to keep my foot on the gas pedal and, uh, you know, keep uplifting and keeping myself... Um, on the right path and help those along the way that I can. Uh, my grandmother was a great woman. Uh, they loved her. I actually ended up uh, contacting the Overcash's family, one of the children that she raised, who's a son. He's, uh, I think he's an executive now. So I contacted him many years ago when I got out of the military uh, because I was very intrigued um, by the fact that he raised this guy and his brother. And i never forget the guy when I reached out to him he, he actually said, he was, he was in shock, man. He was shocked, you know, that my grandmother's, uh, her grandson reached out to them. But he told me stories about my grandmother that were not a surprise to me, how much of a compassionate woman she was. He was like, you know, she was like their mother. She literally raised them. She raised them, man. You know, and, uh, you know, they were appreciative of her just as I was appreciative of, of her as my grandmother. In fact, uh, her working for the mayors back then I had a part to play in some of my education, believe it or not, in an indirect way. And this is how. A lot of times when they, those kids, you know, with money or whatever, they throw their toys away. Well, my granny would get those toys and bring them home to me. And a lot of these toys they were playing with were, they were not just tic-tac-toe. It was really, uh, you know, toys to... Uh, you know, get the get the brain moving, such as the one toy. I can't remember the name of it. It was a medical thing where it was like a, a medical body had all those little parts in it. You had some tweezers, and you try to get the part out of the body. And if you hit the size, then a buzz would go off. So it taught me about the anatomy of the human body. Um, just that little game there. But there was a lot of other games um, that she would bring to me, um, such as things having to do with, uh, with telescopes and, and, you know, you know, the stars and the moon and different things like that, man. So I learned uh, from there because I was not getting it in the Texas educational system. I can tell you that right now. But it showed me also there's a difference between what we're being taught in our schools and what those kids were being taught in their schools. And I think at the time, I think their school was like Pasco High School or whatever. You know, my school was Dunbar High School, Wildcats, ODY, Chaparrales, you know what I'm saying? Graduated from Dunbar High School, 87.